If this does half of what they claim it does, I'm going to be the happiest electronic nerd on the block. Here's something I had to figure out the hard way. You see this is numbered one, two, three, and then the rest of these are ones. Yeah, there's only three uh, unique test points on this thing. Uh, all the rest of these are the same. Like so, for example, number one over here is the same of all these number ones over here. And this number one on this side is the same as all these ones over here. So if you put a resistor like from here to here, it won't test because it's basically just in the same slot. Okay, so if I'm testing a resistor, I have to go from like, for example, one to either two or three over here and then it will work. Um, so yeah, uh, I had to kind of learn that the hard way, as I said. And for a transistor, you would go something like one, two, three. If it was a big component where you uh, had needed a lot of space, you might say put one lead up here in this one, uh, something down here in the three and then across over here into the two. So they, they kind of spread that out so you don't have to contort the leads around too badly. So that's the socket. Over here you've got something similar going on. Again, just three contacts. And this is a two and this is a two. So this up here and this part of the pad down here is the same connection. So again, you can test a three, a three lead component, but you have to make sure that it's all touching unique each of the leads is touching a unique pad and then you punch the button and it will read out up here so that's what we're going to be doing first let me do one wrong and show you what I was talking about this one is in pin 1 and it's also sorry contact 1 and contact 1 this is a 15 ohm resistor when I punch the test button ah, unknown or damaged component okay so the problem is I have this in pin 1 and this in pin 1 so basically there's no component there there's it's only saying uh, actually it's saying nothing so okay uh, let me change this do it right I'll put it in pin 1 and 2 and then we will try it again so here we are again or in a 1 if you look back here on the board on the PC board and we're on 2 and I push the button and yes you have to push the button each time it does not stay on and it gives us a reasonable value of 14.9 uh, for the uh, for the resistor so that's correct just to be different I've put this in uh, a number one slot over here and I think I've got that in number three over there push the button this should be a 10 mega ohm resistor and yeah it's uh, you know plus or minus and it shows that I'm in a, a one contact and a three contact here I have a bipolar transistor I believe this is NPM I'm not quite sure uh, it's actually part of a pair I've got it wired to another one and these came out of an audio uh, device and so these are matched uh, transistors so they're basically opposite but they have very similar characteristics and okay let me punch the button and yes, it's telling me that it's a, it's a PNP and the HFE is the amplification is about 214 and it tells me the base collector and emitter. So that's very nice. Let's uh, try the sister transistor and see what it says. Note that I've got this one in here reversed just to see if it's smart enough to detect uh, which is which. And this should be a PNP if I recall correctly push the button and yes PNP and uh, HFE is similar uh, yeah so this uh, is a matched transistor pair I don't remember what this is it's in my transistor box so let's punch the button and see what it, oh it's uh, it's in the wrong place it's a, a dual diode and it tells you the voltage is on the diode okay so I need to reclassify that that's why you want a device like this is because uh, if you strip components from boards you uh, don't always know what you're getting and uh, if something's misfiled in your inventory well this is a quick way to identify it make sure you don't put a transistor in 
or sorry, a dual diode in where you want a transistor. Now this one, I've kind of put the leads in an odd way to show you that uh, it'll work. Uh, again, I don't know what this one is. It's in my transistor box. And it says, it's a MOSFET. Okay, so it shows you, let's see, what is it showing us? The gate drain and source. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this is uh, very nice, very nice. Okay, let's try some different components. A word of warning, before you insert the capacitor in here, you need to make sure it's drained. Use resistor or whatever, but uh, yeah, and use precaution uh, because high voltage capacitors can carry a charge. A lot of them can carry a charge for a long time. Use the appropriate way to discharge the capacitor. Okay, that warning aside, uh, let's see what we got here. I don't know. I've kind of stuck it in here, just picked two, um, picked two of the contact points. And it looks like uh, 301 picofarads between contacts 1 and 2. Here's an electrolytic I was just trying out for the uh, demo here. And yeah, this is supposed to be 1,000 microfarads. It's not really very close to 1,000 microfarads. So uh, if I believe the meter, and I do because uh, it's shown some other capacitors are right on target, this is this capacitor is no good, so it's uh, time to throw it away. Here's another capacitor that claims to be 1,000 microfarads, 16 volts, exactly like the last one, and yeah, so this one's a lot closer. So this one is good, the other one's not. That's a good justification for having one of these, especially at the cheap price that they sell for. Okay, next on the list are inductors. This one's marked at 100, and I know that's for sure because I actually use an oscilloscope and a frequency generator and so forth, and a known capacitor to, to measure this one. So it's marked as 100, it's pretty close to 100. Uh, let's see what the meter says. Uh, it's about 80, 80 milli, uh, 0.08. Uh, millihenries or about 80 microhenries. So yeah, not very accurate. Um, that's something I found about the meter is when it comes to inductance, which is one of my favorite things, it's kind of weak and has a really limited range. Let's try some other inductors and see how it goes. This is a coil I wound myself for kind of like a large jewel thief type thing and I have no idea what it is. So, what does that say? Uh, 0 0.2 millihenries? Yeah, could be. Um, let's try some others of known value. This is another one I've measured using a scope and an oscillator and known capacitor. Um, so it's got a core in it and it's got a relatively short coil. And let's see, it thinks it's a resistor. So that's a problem I've found with this is uh, inductors like this, uh, it thinks they're resistors. So not, uh, not quite sure what to, to do about that. Okay, so that's it for inductors. As we've seen today, this is pretty good with capacitors, in fact, detecting bad ones. Um, it's good with resistors. It's good for bipolars, FETs, things like that. It has a limited range with the inductors, okay, so that's the weak point. But you know, for six or seven bucks, I mean, if, especially if you strip circuit boards, wow, this is really worth having. Well, that was it. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your home electronics projects.